Hello again. I thought that it would be helpful if I show you the next step in this process, which is making some elevations uh, based on your ground plan. So um, as I mentioned previously, um, what you want to do is go and make a photocopy of your ground plan. That keeps your original clean and it also makes it um, a, a, a nice copy that you can refer to and draw on and muck about with and it's not going to you're not going to lose the work that you've done already so what i'm going to do now is code this so that i know um, that uh, my first wall is a and my next wall is b and i'm going to just do this on this one ground plan so that I know which wall is which along the way. If I had another wall, I'd keep going with C. If I had a small wall over here, I could call that A and then B and C, however I want to do that. Um, you could certainly use numbers, uh, however you want to go about it. So the next step is to take my little scale rule and to see where I am with um, my the size of my wall. And I got two options here as far as transferring this over to the paper that I'm going to work on with my elevation. Um, I can either measure and transfer these numbers because I see that I've got a foot here and then the bookcase ends at six and then the door starts at seven. I think you can see all that. Um, I'll spin that around. The other side of the door is at 10 and then 12 ends that. So I would know how big that is, or I can take trace paper and lay it down on top of this and lift those um, straight away. So to make the process um, a little easier, what I did was I took my front view, my front elevation of the theater, and I believe everybody should have one of these for working with in class. Um, it has down here the stage floor and the trap. And I, as before, I went along with my T-square and I squared it up and leveled it so I can easily, very easily move along here with my T-square and mimic all of these lines and get myself vertical lines very quickly or horizontal lines. If I need something at an angle, I can draw that with my T-square. But um, So what I think I'm actually going to do is take this piece of trace paper. Again, I like working on trace paper because I can see things. I, um, below that have already been drawn. And I've got my little scale person here. And eventually what I'm gonna do is lay in a scale person. But I'm, I'm coming in, I don't know, an inch or two from the bottom of the paper. So I got some space to label the drawing and to, if I decide to move things around. And I'm gonna take my T-square and I'm gonna lay in across the bottom of the page. My T-square isn't quite as long as my paper, so I'm gonna go ahead and extend this. Um, I'm gonna lay in a nice clean line along the bottom of my paper. I think that hopefully you can see that pretty clearly, even though this is kind of light. So as I mentioned before, I can either take my drawing and transfer using all of these measurements that I had before. Again, I got a foot, blah, 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 or I can, and then I can drop my uh, use my little scale rule and transfer those right onto my paper. Or what I can do is go along here and I hopefully you can see this. I'm using my the straight line that I drew along the bottom of the paper to uh, lay right across this ground plan drawing. And so now I'm going to make a mark where each of these intersects. Working in quarter inch scale doesn't have to be, you know, super detailed. Um, it, it's a little more like those eighth inch scale models that we made where you just kind of want to get a sense of the space. If we were doing, you know, finished drawings and turning them into um, a, an actual set, we'd work in half inch scale. But for roughing things in, I think this works quite well. So you can see now I have my lines on here. And I started because this is wall A, I'm going to put A over here. And then I can come along and I can put in wall, wall B. That sounds sort of like while. Wall B. And I'm going to put that next to it. And so you see how I've got these laid out. 
and here's B. I can do that with a circle or a triangle to notate that this is the wall that corresponds there. Now I got quite a few lines going. I don't want to get too confused. And then what I do is come along and tape this down into the space. Um, so what I'm doing is very quickly now, since I've got this line uh, on my drawing squared away, I can transfer up and send up straight lines for my doorways, for the edge of the walls, because really I, I want straight walls for, for uh, the design that I'm working on here. Um, and here's the larger wall that's over here, wall A. Um, and I'm trying to keep this stuff straight here. Um, I'm making the uh, wall, the the outside of the wall, those lines are the tallest. And, I'm, and since I know a bookcase and um, a doorway are going to be shorter, I'm actually drawing those in a little bit shorter. Hopefully you can see all of that as that fills in. And then I got a person here. And I want to put my person nearby so I have a sense of proportion. And I can actually just even take this figure and kind of trace them in here. I know that's a little wonky, but really for a scale person, all you really need is, you know, a head and some shoulders and, and taper the torso a little bit. And you're there, you can give them a belt and start wiggling lines and it looks like you've got some arms and that sort of thing. But you don't have to get real detailed. What you do want is a sense of proportion here so you can see how big that uh, wall is. Um, so I know that my figure is about six feet high. Most doors are around seven, so I've got my scale rule here and I'm drawing that in. And um, I'm going to mark this other door that's over here around seven feet high also. So here are my double French doors, you know. Those are coming across there. And then I've got my other door that I'm laying in here. And again, I'm just using the edge of the drawing board, sliding my T-square along as I need to. Um, since I know my French doors are um, splitting in the middle, I'm gonna make them a mark there. And then I come along, use my T-square, and lay in the middle of that. Now, I'm looking at my research collages. I'm keeping them handy. I'm also using a bit of my imagination and also what I know about buildings. There's always trim around doors and windows. So when you look at that in your research, you'll notice trim here always. There's trim along the bottom of the wall, um, the baseboard, if you will, and usually there's a little um, quarter round piece where the floor and the baseboard meet. So already I'm starting to get my um, wall that's laid in here. Notice it it's not quite so easy to see here on the trace paper um, with all these other lines, but when I lift it, I, I get a little bit better definition. Now I'm looking at this and I say, whoa, these are some pretty big doors. Well, that's just because I haven't finished filling in um, all of the structure that needs to go with doors. When you build them, they need to be fairly strong and substantial or they're just gonna woggle and fall apart. So um, here I am filling in detail for these. And I know that I want the bottom of the, door, the window not to go completely to the bottom. Um, of my drawing and then I'm going to add the mullions and I'm looking at my research and seeing oh yeah look at that that's got about three panes that looks good and then windows are typically the panes are rectilinear so it's a little bit longer forgive my wiggliness here in my drawing I'm not taking a lot of time and being super accurate but um, I it can make adjustments as I go. So I'm gonna actually make the bottom of my door um, a little bit higher because I, I kind of like that aesthetically, but also I wanna try to get these window panes fairly similar there. So now you can see I've been adding that. And I know at the top of my wall, um, I'm gonna need some kind of trim happening up here. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is use my scale, scale rule and figure out um, how tall I want it to be. 
um, in the drawing, I think, let me tip this down. I think that you can see that um, the, uh, that the grid goes really high, but I don't have to bring my scenery all the way up there. In fact, it'd be kind of insane if I did try to do that. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is I think I'll, I could make a 14 foot high wall. I think I'll probably be closer to 12. Here's my figure. And I think 12 will actually work pretty well as far as um, the height of that. Now, if I were to simply lay this uh, um, wall out and put some, usually there's crown molding and trim at the top, which I can delineate with a few lines coming in up here. I could add more trim and draw a little more detail, depending on what my research is showing me. But remember um, that it's not always the most interesting to look at square, uh, you know, walls. So what else can I do to this thing? Um, I could totally come along and um, draw in some kind of circular form or semicircular form. I could turn it into um, a French window structure that echoes what I want to do down here. And actually, I think with this um, window down there, I'm gonna add a little bit of a French window. I'm, my research is showing it and it seems right um, to have a little bit more stuff going on with this. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of freehand draw it. I can always take another layer of trace paper if I've made a mess and, and draw again, but I'm, I'm gonna put this in here. And I, I like to be a little bit looser when I'm first starting off and just beginning my drawing because um, there's something that happens, I think, when you just, if you get all married to using only T-squares and straight edges and what have you, you lose some of the expression that comes from just being a visual artist and, I, and I'm encouraging you to do that kind of thing. So I, I could also create a structure that has a, a roof up here um, so that this looks a little bit more perhaps like a house um, to give that that kind of structure. Again, um, I may find answers for some of what I'm doing by looking at those collages of other set designs. Maybe somebody else has done something and I really like the detail of it. But for me, I think just mimicking, here's my big eraser, just mimicking that curve in there for now um, is a, is perhaps how I'll go with this part of the wall for the moment. Um, just a kind of a simple curve that goes on top of this. Um, I've got my other wall here. And again, I can move my trace paper around and start, you know, see how these things begin to work together. Um, and I've got my scale person, so I know proportionally how this thing's going to work. If I were going to add um, some kind of wallpaper pattern. I could begin to doodle those things. Um, don't draw too much or shade too much because you're going to come along later and um, add uh, watercolor and different details to this um, anon. But maybe it, it's important for you. Do you see this neat wallpaper pattern that you've got going? You could add that quickly and a little bit of abstraction there. Or you could take your T-square and run some faint lines if you want a very linear wallpaper pattern. That's fairly easy to do. Or if you were imagining that it was a little more like a gauze or something like that. Again, I encourage you to think metaphoric as much as anything. Now I can come along here and I can draw my bookcase. Um, I, I can lay out this drawing and, and finish things up. Um, so I can see proportionally how this works. I'm going to add another person in here. Um, but I just kind of wanted to give you a sense of how all this is going to work together. Bef I want to make sure also in my drawing that I'm leaving enough space around this that I, when I cut this out, I can leave extra tabs for stiffeners and connectors. If this wall were coming together in a corner that these two met, I would probably just draw them right next to each other and they'd bump one into the next. So when I make this wall, I can just simply cut this out and fold that and I'll have my wall coming together. But I, I want to 
have these in my design as separate things. So I'll finish working on this design and in another video, I'll show you how to take this um, drawing that I've got going here and transfer it and begin to make my model. But I wanna just double check and see how this is gonna look in front of, in, here in the stage space. This all from here over and this portion of my drawing of the theater, this is all the psych. So I can either have psych or black drape and I think this is gonna work quite well proportionally. It's, it's pretty imposing. Um, and then, you know, part of the question is, how do I want to finish this to bring these details together? Do I want to mimic any of what's below there in this form? I don't know. I'll keep doing my research and, and think about that structure as I get going. But I'll show you in another video how to create the model. Thanks.